All right, there we go. Hello, everybody. Just giving Zoom a sec to get updated. I know that it takes a sec to get everybody in, get everybody connected, but welcome one, welcome all to another edition of the Virtuous Insider series. We are still in the early days of having kind of re revamped, relaunched, however you want to think of it our webinar series. This used to be a monthly webinar. Now we've been meeting weekly. And most of those sessions have been uh, 30 minutes because if we're asking you to meet with us every week, we can't take up all of your time. We know that. But today is our training webinar. We want to take some more time, take a deep dive. So we do have an hour for today. Very excited to spend that time with you guys. And, and quite frankly, to have a little bit more time to dive into some of the features that we want to talk about. We have a little less business to take care of because we've been doing that on a weekly basis. Now, while everyone's coming in, finding a seat in the front of the class, <laughs> getting situated here, a um, couple things, just our basic ground rules, right? Some housekeeping. We are recording the presentation today. So this will be made available afterward, just like all of our recordings are available in the Virtuous Support Center, the support page. And we'll actually show you where that is in just a minute. Everybody is muted. That way we can try to get some good audio here. Uh, and not a surprise, right? That's how webinars work. But as always, we encourage questions. And you've got a, a couple of experts here, so we would love to have your questions. Please do use the Q&A feature to send those in. Uh, you'll see uh, us in the chat a little bit here and there, but if you can use the Q&A box for questions, that's really the best way to make sure that we can keep track of them. That chat just keeps on flowing and stuff will go flying right by. But if it's in the Q&A, we can make sure that we can hang on to it and we can address it when we, we get to that point in the session. And when I keep saying we, right, it's not just me, you've got two of us here today. So I'm Scott Richards. For those who don't know, I'm the director of training here at Virtuous and with me, is my co-host, Stephanie Larson. She's a member of the training team here at Virtuous. Stephanie, how you doing? I'm doing dandy, Scott. How are you? I am just spiffy, thanks. <laughs> As a matter of fact. Um, and Stephanie and I will also crack ourselves up and each other up at different points in time, and you guys are just going to have to roll with it. It's kind of what we do. Okay, so in terms of the agenda for today, what we want to cover, like I mentioned, we, normally we'd have a little bit more to cover in terms of recent features and things like that. But um, today we do want to do a little bit of a recap because we know that this is when we would traditionally, again, meet for our monthly training. But if you haven't been able to make some of these new insider sessions lately, we wanted to catch you up a little bit on what you may have missed. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about some of the recent editions of the Insider, and then we're going to dive in to our topic today, which is talking about notes and tasks, which sounds like a pretty simple thing. But we also know that for a lot of folks, that's where you spend a lot of your time day to day, managing your interactions with your supporters, keeping track of what the next touch point is going to be, making sure that you're logging the conversations that you've had so that you can go back to them. I mean, that's a lot of what you look to Virtuous to be able to do. And quite frankly, we've expanded some of the functionality there quite a bit in, in the last, well, let's say, year or so. Boy, the last year was a blur. Uh, and we want to make sure everybody is up to speed on the latest and greatest there. So we're going to dive in on, on notes and tasks and, and everything that uh, you were afraid to ask about them. And then, of course, we'll have some time for questions and we will wrap things up here for this week. All right, so thanks everybody. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at uh, some of those recent insider sessions, anything that you may have missed. So uh, it, we ha did have a session here. Uh, and here, let me go ahead and switch over to looking in Virtuous proper. That'll probably be a little bit easier here. Just switch gears for a sec. So now I'm here uh, actually on the Virtuous support page. And of course, you can get to this from Virtuous if you're logged into the app. You can just click on the little mortarboard hat and you can go to support. That'll take you right to it. Okay. And this is where you can find a lot of different documentation and resources. Uh, Stephanie and I keep adding new articles in here all the time. Uh, and if you go to the webinars and videos section, that's where you can register for this webinar series and you can see some of the recent recordings. Uh, so we did have our product pulse section that was uh, earlier this month. And in that product pulse section, we did have Jason Van Lu. He's our director of product on 
And we looked at some of the newest release features in Virtuous. So you can see some of the, the newest things that we've added uh, in terms of our, our recent release features. And we took a look, a little sneak peek at what's coming in terms of some new membership features to really enhance the offering around membership. Uh, and then just a chance to be able to chat with Jason and, and with myself, questions about the product, questions about kind of where it's headed and everything else. Uh, we'll try to do these sessions at least once a month. So keep your eyes open for those product pulse sessions and you can join in and, and have a little bit of dialogue with us. Uh, last week, we actually had our client spotlight and Stephanie was one of the co-hosts there. Stephanie, uh, what can you tell us about the client spotlight? Well, Megan and I had a really fun time. We chatted about um, a success story from a Heidi's village, um, which is near and dear to my heart. It's an animal rescue and sanctuary. Um, but they had a unique kind of scenario where they were actually launching as an organization at the start of COVID. So they kind of had to shift everything um, really as they were kind of getting off the ground um, to begin with. And so we talked about some of the ways that they kind of grew their uh, donor database, they started with, you know, a handful of, of folks that were supporting them, and then really kind of flipped the switch on large gatherings and stuff like that, and utilized a lot of the kind of automation, and very, very kind of detailed, specific pieces to really bring all of their interactions to a, a kind of one-on-one -on -one basis. So it was a fun conversation where uh, Megan and I were kind of touching through how they did that, and then we flipped into virtual to talk kind of logistically, like what do some of those things look like when we put them into play in Virtuous? So I'll drop the link to that one in the chat as well. That's awesome. Thank you. And then uh, I did also want to highlight recently, we did do a, uh, a little partner spotlight as well. We're shining the spotlight on other folks. It's not just us here. Uh, and we actually had our, our friends over at Overflow. So uh, Jose from Overflow was able to join us and chat a little bit about the integration that we have with Overflow, which allows you to accept stock donations online when you're using virtuous giving and have that data flow through into virtuous directly. So that was pretty exciting. Um, and you can see just from looking at my screen here, right? We've had a few others here that we've had, including a, a Q&A, stuff the trainer. Um, uh, we're trying to change up as much as we can, but if you uh, missed any of these, you can always go back and check out the recordings here. We'll add today's recording here as well. Um, uh, and if you haven't been able to make it every week, that's fine, but you know, the more the merrier. We'd love to have you come join us anytime. You can hang out with us on The Insider. Okay. Uh, so that's enough about uh, that, about the past. Let's look at what we want to talk about today, shall we? Uh, so hopping back in here, because, you know, I, I have a slide for this and everything. I want to show it off. Uh, we're going to talk about keeping up with notes and tasks. I know it's not the most exciting sort of title in the world or anything like that. But again, this is the stuff that you got to do, right? Everybody's doing this stuff all the time in terms of keeping up with your supporters. So we wanted to talk about it. So we'll spend a lot of this time in the product itself. Okay, so we'll flip back over, we'll hang out in Virtuous and show you a few things. So uh, before we get too deep into the weeds, I just wanted to talk very briefly about the role of notes and tasks in Virtuous. Um, they do have some very specifically defined roles uh, that are a little bit different from some other systems, at least in this space, right? Um, but notes and tasks. Now tasks can have a number of functions because tasks can be associated with a few different things. They can be associated with a contact. They can be associated with a grant. They can be associated with a campaign communication. Uh, but in every case, it really means the same thing. A task is something that you're going to do or that you're supposed to do. And hopefully if you're staying on top of things, it's in the future as well, right? If it's in the past, then you're a little bit behind. But that's the idea with tasks. They're all those things that you know you need to do or you should do or you're going to do, right? And then notes, those are the things that you've already done, okay? So a, a task will eventually, if you're following sort of a linear path here, a task will become a note essentially once you've done it because the notes are how you document everything that you've already done. Notes also give you a way to add some additional context or insight uh, specifically to contacts, but of course you can also include notes on grants. You can also include notes on projects. There's a few different places where they can live. And they can give you the ability again to, to document interactions, to add additional context or information, and even to attach resources, attach files 
directly to a record so that you can go find those later on. And so those are the two defined roles. So we wanna start with tasks because if we're talking in terms of time, that's, that's what happens first, right? You, you create a task and then you're gonna do it. Now we talk about creating a task, just right then and there, you already have a few choices to make when it comes to creating a task. We wanted to bubble tasks up because again, they're a core part of what a lot of fundraisers are gonna to have to do day in, day out. And so right here from the dashboard, I've got all my widgets. I've added a bunch lately. You can see that we'll keep scrolling forever. Uh, but then you have your tasks pane, right? That's one of the, the default panels that's on everybody's dashboard. No matter how many widgets you've got, if you have to keep scrolling like me, you'll get there. Now you can see I've got some that are just a wee bit past due by you know, say several years. Okay? So you shouldn't have that many that are yelling at you here. That's why I have 254 tasks, but these are the tasks that I have on my list. Okay, and so um, the idea here is to bubble up right away as soon as you log into Virtuous. Okay, what are the things I'm supposed to be doing right now? If like me, you have some things that you haven't taken care of from way back in 2016, you're gonna have to clear those out first where you can get to the things you gotta do right now, All right? But I can keep loading more. I can view that entire list right in here. And if I want to add a new task, I've got a quick little add button here. I can add a task. You can click on the three dots here, the little menu, and you can go ahead and add a task right from here. Okay. So easy peasy. Now, if I'm viewing a contact record, so if we're viewing our friends, the mix samples, right, the mix sample household here, you do have a tasks tab. Okay, that's where you can see all the tasks related to this particular record. And from there, you can go ahead and add a task that's specific to this contact. Okay. So you've got the ability to do it right from the dashboard. You've got the ability to do it from a contact record right in here. Uh, and you also have the ability to do this on the tasks page. Now the tasks page is in the menu over here on the left-hand side. Mine is very easy to find because it's got a little counter on it saying I've got those 254 outstanding tasks. Now hopefully you don't have that many, right? Maybe you have one, um, but it's a little check right over here, a little check symbol. All right, you gotta check things off as you do them. But you can go in there to the tasks screen and from there, you've got a big blue button. You can click to create a new task. Okay, so right away, you've got a few different places to be able to do this. Now, um, if you're creating a task from here on the tasks screen, if you're creating a task from here on the dashboard, you're actually gonna see a lot of the same options. When you create a task from a contact record, slightly different, okay? And, and we'll take a look at that here. So over here, and let's go back to the dashboard there. Oh, Harry and Sally were right at the top of the list. I meant to click on that, but that's fine. We'll click on them right from here and we'll bring up their contact record and we'll be good to go. There we go, task, task, task. Okay, uh, so from the dashboard, let's go ahead and click on the add button. We wanna add a new task. And by default here, I'm creating a task. You'll see the type says task, meaning that's your run of the mill day to day. You got to call somebody, you have to reach out to somebody, you've got to meet with somebody, et cetera. Okay. And so I can come in here and I can put in a note about what the task is, right? Call and see how the event was. Great. The due date, whenever you're creating a task, the system is going to assume it's due at least a couple of days in the future. You can, of course, update that to be whatever date you need. You can just click to open up the calendar. Maybe I need to call them, uh, let's say in a couple of weeks here, that's great. And then you can select the contact that this should be associated with, right down here. So let's say we're gonna associate this with Bobby here. Great, I gotta call Bobby, see how the event was. Now it assumes I'm creating this as a task for myself. That's our default assumption, that this is a note to self thing I've got to do later on. You can always update that because you can assign a task to any other user in the system. Okay? And any other user in the system can also assign a task to you. Okay, so remember that, that that is open, okay? So I can assign that task to any other user. Any other user can assign a task to me, okay? So don't just start carpet bombing your coworkers with a bunch of tasks because they can send them right back at you. Not very kind. And I can add a little description in here if I need to add some more context about this particular task, right? Bobby was hosting 
a private event as a cultivation event for a group of donors he is connected with. Great. So that lets me know, hey, what's the deal? Right now, I don't have to go diving through the contact notes on Bobby's record to figure out why the heck I'm supposed to call him or what exactly the event was, because maybe I can't keep track of all of that in my head. Okay. Now, this assumes that I'm just going to do a regular old task. I'm going to call Bobby. I'm going to see how this thing went, and that's great. Now, I also have the option here to create this as a recurring task. Obviously, what we've created here would not be a recurring type of task. I'm asking the specific question. But if I'm managing uh, the relationship with Bobby, he's one of the folks in my portfolio. Okay, and I've got a few folks that I'm managing. And maybe I wanna make sure that I'm having a check-in, a little touch point with them at least once a quarter. Then I could create a recurring task and I can set the frequency of that. Maybe it's gonna be quarterly, right? I could say, hey, just call and check in. Great, now I've created a, a recurring task for myself so that every three months, I'm gonna have a task that says, hey, you should call Bobby, you should check in with him, you should see how he's doing and just say, hey. That way it can't slip my mind, it can't fall off my radar, right? I can keep track of all of that. Pretty straightforward there. Now once, here, let's keep this as a single task, just given what we've created. Um, and we'll create this for me, I won't surprise anybody with this, but I could go ahead and save that task. All right, and that's gonna add that task to my list. It's gonna be way on down there at the bottom, okay? But if I were to go view Bobby's record, there he is. For those who are comic book fans, Bobby Drake is Iceman himself. There we go. Um, we can go ahead and click on tasks, right? And then there it is. So, hey, call, see how the event was. Bobby was hosting a private event. So, okay, great, that's my reminder swell. Okay, and then I can go in and I can complete that task. Now, when it comes to completing that task, I've got a few options. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to get through creating first, then we'll talk a little bit more about what happens once I have those tasks. Now, I, we talked about how creating a contact task on a contact record is a little bit different. Okay, here, you're going to notice I can, you know, give that task a name. I can plug in a description. That's the same, the due date. I can set it to recur. Here I can select one of the individuals on this record and say, hey, this is specifically related to Harry or to Sally. That's who you want to call, right? And I can set this up with myself as the owner or any other user. So same thing. I can assign it to anybody else in the system. Anybody else in the system can assign it to me, okay? So a lot of the same things that we just went through when we created this task here for Bobby, right? But I did mention that there's a little bit of a difference in terms of when you create these tasks. And here, let's go to the tasks page to show this. Because like I said, creating a task from the task page or creating it from the dashboard, you'll see some of the same options. Okay? And if I click on new task up here, the, the option that we don't see on the contact record is this type, the type for the task because we just created a basic task, like I mentioned earlier, right? That's sort of your run of the mill. But you also have the ability in Virtuous to create what's called an automated task. Now, automated tasks are a little bit different from tasks that are created via automation, okay? Automated versus automation. I know it's a very, very fine line, right? In terms of that distinction. Okay. But there are some big differences there in terms of how those function. Okay. Automated tasks, Stephanie was just uh, uh, mentioning those. I know Stephanie's jazzed about automated tasks and how they work. But an automated task is something that I don't need access to workflow automation to be able to create. So if I am, am not someone who has access to virtuous marketing, I'm not managing workflows for my organization, that's all fine. I can still create an automated task. Okay. And an automated task, you notice, is not associated with a particular contact, right? This form changed a little bit as soon as I switched the type. Because instead, an automated task is triggered anytime a particular milestone is met. And these are the milestones that automated tasks will look for. So a first time gift. It doesn't matter 
right? Uh, anytime someone gives their first gift, I don't, I don't care what the amount is, I don't care anything else. If they give their first gift, I want you to let me know about it because I want to call them and I want to say, thank you so much. It's amazing that you chose to give. Okay. Or if someone gives a gift that exceeds a specific threshold. So, and I can set that threshold. I define what that is, right? So maybe, hey, I, you know, $25 gifts, $100 gifts, those are all fine. If someone gives a gift that is over $5,000, and maybe to be more specific, $4,999, right? So 5,000 and up. Hey, that's the size where I start to really get curious and I want that on my radar. I don't want to have to go look for it. I want you to create a task for me because that's something where I should be picking up the phone and calling to say thank you, that size and above. Okay. And so you've got that for any single gift or for lifetime or year to date thresholds. Hey, life to date, you've just given X amount of dollars, right? You've now given at least $10,000 over the course of your relationship with our organization. I want to call and I want to celebrate you and I want to say thank you. And instead of me having to go run a query every, every week and see who that is, hey, Virtuous, you just tell me when it happens and I'm not going to do anything else, okay? I'll just wait till you let me know. Same for year to date. Upcoming anniversary and upcoming birthday. These are kind of neat because with the upcoming anniversary and birthday, right, we want to make sure that you've got a little time to send someone a card in the mail, right? Um, and Stephanie, I know that you were um, taking a look at some of these in terms of the, uh, the timing for the upcoming birthday and things like that um, to see, well, hey, how long do I get to send someone a little card or something in the mail? before it actually hits their birthday, right? Yep, sorry about that, Scott. I was typing <laughs> and unmuted myself. <laughs> <laughs> so we go with a, a seven calendar day uh, kind of time frame, allowing for, you know, depending on when that milestone was hit, allowing for some weekend time. I joke because I'm the daughter of a postman. And so he says never, no, less than seven days before you need to send something. So that actually works out well, but it's about seven days um, for the birthdays and the anniversaries. Excellent. Yes, muting and unmuting. It's always fun. Um, but yeah, so that gives you time to, to not just give them a call and say happy birthday, but actually like take the time, get a nice little Hallmark card or whatever, drop it in the mail, send them something to say happy birthday. That's why it's labeled as upcoming, right? And then also for a new recurring gift. Right, because especially for organizations that might be doing, um, you know, sponsorship or anything like that, or if you've got a, a very, you know, branded monthly donor program, um, and you want to know when someone joins anytime, great, you can create any one of these automated tasks, right? And so I could create, let's say I wanted to create this for single gift threshold, exceeds four nine nine nine, you know, call donor and say that they rock. Great. Uh, now you'll notice I have the option to create this for followed contacts only. That way I can limit the audience that's gonna get pulled in from this task. There is no other limiter or restriction on this. Okay? This is looking at the entire database and saying, okay, anytime anybody gives over you know, 5,000 or up, I'm gonna create a task and Scott, you're gonna to be told to give them a call and say, thank you. Okay? But if I wanted to limit that, the scope of that, I could say, hey, just create this for the folks I'm following. That is not the same for those of you that are using organization groups, say to manage portfolios or something like that. It's not the same thing, okay? When we say followed contacts, what we really mean is on the dashboard, right? you can see your list of contacts that you follow. Here's the activity from folks that I'm following. And here's the list of the contacts that I'm following. Okay, I've only got about six. I don't, I don't like to have this list get too out of hand. Then there's just a lot of noise, at least in, in my perspective. Um, but when I use that checkbox, that's going to say, hey, you're only going to get pinged for gifts you know, over that size if they come from any of these six folks, at least right now. Maybe I go follow a few more later on. That'll change. Okay, But that's the restriction there is the folks that I'm following by using that, that follow feature. And remember, you can follow a contact if you click on them. All right, so I click on Clint here. 
and I want to follow him as well. Right from the contact record, there's a little heart icon. You can hover. It tells you that's how you follow a contact. And I can click on that. And now I'm following Clint as well. So anything that happens with him, I'm going to get updated on that right away. And I can save that. And on the tasks page, you're going to see that show up over here, okay, that automated task. You can see I've got a couple of automated tasks set up over here. Now, automated tasks are not tasks necessarily. They are a set of rules that says, hey, create tasks for me according to these parameters. That's why they're kind of separated. Once those fire off, they'll create actual tasks, which you see in here. And you'll get something that looks like this, right? Gave a first time gift of $49. Well, this is from an automated task about a uh, first time gift. And that, that's what that looks like right there. That's why I have so many random old tasks in my task list. Now you can come over here and edit these at any point. So if I wanted to edit this and say, boy, I need to change this threshold, it's too high or too low, or I, I only wanna do this for followed contacts because it's too many people, right? Or if you wanted to say, I'm tired of making these calls, I'm gonna have someone else do it. Great, you can come in and do that. The one thing I can't do is change the milestone because if you're gonna do that, well, look, let, let's just you know, get rid of that automated task then click on the trash can, and then you can create a new one. Easy enough to do. Okay. Now, the other type of task that you might have is uh, an automation task. Right? And those are tasks that are specifically created via workflow automation. Remember that one of the options for your actions here is to create a task. And so here's one that ran today got one contact in it. Boy, that sure looks like it was a fake demo workflow, doesn't it? Um, and the only thing in here is it's going to create a task for me to send a welcome email. Great. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. And for Moira and Johnny Rose here, that's who it fired off. All right. They qualified for that. And I can see right here in the actions that they've been assigned, that task been assigned here. And if I go to the tasks tab, that task is there waiting for me to go ahead and do it. Now, the neat thing about creating tasks via automation as opposed to an automated task is there I can add a lot more parameters, okay? My automated task, right, when I go in there and I create that automated task, I don't have the ability to create additional business rules outside of this milestone has been met. Like I said, by default, it's looking at the entire database but maybe I would like to set some parameters. I want this to only apply to folks in a specific organization group. I only want it to apply you know, for single gift threshold. I only want that to apply to gifts that are made to a specific project, right? Um, if I've got any of those sorts of rules that I wanna customize for myself, then the best course would be, hey, do this through an automated workflow as opposed to an automated task, right? So again, automation versus automated when it comes to tasks. Okay, and I know there have been some questions coming through and some folks have been chatting with uh, Stephanie on some of those questions. That is great. As you do have questions, please do go ahead and drop them in. Happy to address those, but I wanted to talk now, we kind of know the difference between the types of tasks and how to create them. I wanted to talk a little bit about viewing your tasks, right? And then we'll talk a little bit about notifications. We got a lot to cover. But right now we're on the task screen, which is where we wanna be because I wanna talk about viewing tasks. So from here, right, I can view all of my tasks. That's the default tab. So tasks that have been assigned to me, right? Where I am the assigned user, that's the idea. Now, uh, this will show me all of my tasks or I can say, hey, I just wanna see the ones that are past due, which for me is a whole heck of a lot of them, right? And then if I want to feel a little bit better about myself, well, what are the tasks I've already done? What are the ones I've resolved? Oh, great, here they are. Swell, I can see a bunch of those. And then if I want to see tasks that are assigned to the team, okay, I want to see tasks that I've created and assigned to other users. That's what I'm curious to see. Well, I can do that here. That's what assigned to team means, right? And it says that right here. You've created them, you've assigned them to another user. They might be completed and it'll tell you when. They might still be outstanding, like we can see this here. But if you've created a task and you've assigned it to another user, this is a great place to go and look and see if that got completed. And you've got a little search 
up here to be able to search on everything that's on this tab as well. And then on the all tasks tab, it's literally that. It's every task in Virtuous. They might be your tasks. They might be other users' tasks. They may have been created by you. They may have been created by someone else. Okay, this is everything that you have permission to be able to see. And from here, you've got the ability to search, right? But I've also got this ability to add a filter. Right? So maybe I wanna come in here and I say, hey, I wanna see all the tasks in here where I am the assigned user. There we go. That cuts that down quite a bit, right? And then I wanted to sort these based on create date. Great, so there's the one that we just created for Bobby, right? Here's one for uh, Moira and Johnny. That's the one that got created through automation. And here's one that Stephanie assigned to me because I need to call Tony Stark and ask him about uh, the training for the Ironman race. Like I said, we crack ourselves up, we crack each other up, there you go. Um, but I can also add additional filters on here. So if I only wanna see those that are outstanding or that are not completed or anything else, right? I can go ahead and do that. So maybe I want tasks that were assigned to me, created by Stephanie. I can get in there <clears throat> and I can filter that however I like, okay? So I've got the ability to do that from here. You've also got the ability to come up here and either bulk dismiss or bulk reassign tasks. So you'll see the checkbox over here. I can use this by default. They're all selected, all 280. Uh, it tells me up here, or I could pick and choose tasks that I wanna select and I could dismiss them in bulk, meaning, hey, I'm not gonna do these. So if I wanna clean up all my outstanding tasks from back in 2016, that would be the way for me to do it. I can also come in and reassign. So let's say a team member has left your organization. There are some things that they have outstanding. Well, I can go search for all of the tasks that are assigned you know, to that user who's left, and then I could bulk reassign their tasks to someone else. Okay. So I can make sure that those things aren't gonna fall through the cracks. Now, if, uh, like me, I have never met a problem I couldn't solve with Trello, right? That's kind of how I roll. I just, that, that's how I organize things. Uh, if you're like me and you do like to get that kind of a view, we do have a different view for tasks, and that is the task board. And it really is that Kanban style board, right, where you can move cards along. It's got some default filters on here, so it's showing you um, by default, tasks that you know are assigned to you, in this case, they're assigned to me, right? And where the due date is in this sort of uh, uh, two month window. Right? We wanna give you enough of a view to say, hey, here's things that are, are coming up or were recently due. You might have a lot more tasks that are, are old or, or in the far future. You don't necessarily wanna manage those just by themselves, but here's what this looks like, okay? So I've got all these different columns on here. Now I could change this if I wanted to. So I could say, hey, I, uh, I'm gonna get rid of that due date. And now I get all these in red that are yelling at me because they're past due. I get a bunch here that were completed, right? That's great. And you can see that I've got a mix of tasks in here, just like we had on the task screen. I've got some tasks that are communication tasks. They're tied to a campaign communication. I've got some tasks that are tied to grants. Here's a grant task that I did. And I'll have some that are tied to contacts as well. Now, once I change that filter criteria, if I reload the page, it's gonna go back to the default filtering. Okay. And then if I wanted to come in here and say, hey, uh, I went ahead and I called Bobby, right? I could click on the three dots. I could view the contact record if I wanna see some more information. If I wanna edit the task, I could do it right from here. And if I move the status from not started to in progress, in progress might mean, hey, I've reached out. I tried to call him, I left a voicemail. So I can't really cross it off yet. It's not done, but it's also not something I haven't started, right? It's in progress. I can do that. And once I save that task, you'll see it actually moves that card over for me. Now I don't have to edit it to do that. If I wanted to, I could also just drag these around and that'll update the status. If I come in here and edit the task, you'll see it's back to not started because I moved it back over. Okay. And then I can even drag it over to completed and then I'll be prompted to log a note. You'll see a little link on there. It says, leave a note because you went ahead and you did this thing. You reached out to that contact 
Now you should document it. And so if you'd like to get a broader view, right? I know that the sort of all tasks view has things paged by, you know, like 10 at a time or whatever. But if you are just that kind of person who likes to visually organize or you want to see everything laid out in sort of a bigger picture view, this is a great way to be able to come in and do that is to manage things from the task board view. Now, once you've created tasks or if tasks are being created for you, you'll also be notified that you have a task to complete. Okay, now I'm being notified already right in Virtuous, right? I've got that little counter, it's up to 255 now, telling me I've got a task to do. If I come into the tasks page or if I come in to the dashboard even, it's gonna show me, hey, here's the tasks that you have to do. And again, assuming I'm not dragging around stuff from 2016, It'll tell me what I've got on my plate. What do I need to do? But you might not be in virtuous at the time that a task is created or assigned to you. And we will send you email notifications. Now, there are some business rules, some parameters around this. So I created a task for myself to call Bobby Dre. The system is not going to send me an email reminder to say, hey, you assigned something to you. Assuming I know about it because I'm the one who created it, at least right now. But if another user were to go in and assign a task to me, or if you go in and assign a task to another user, right, then the system is going to send an immediate email notification that says, hey, just so you know, a task just got assigned to you. It'll tell you who assigned it, right? Stephanie assigned a task to me. It says, hey, you're going to have to call this donor. And then there's a link that takes me to the tasks page so I can see what that task is. But I'll be notified as soon as that task has been assigned if another user does the assignment. So a human being has gone in and said, hey, go do this. Emails will go out right away. Now, if I've assigned the task to myself, again, we don't send that immediate reminder. We're assuming I remember what I just did, but I will still get a reminder. Okay, the difference is it's going to come typically in sort of the task digest email, as we call it the digest, that'll go out. And this is an example of what that looks like here. And this will let you know about any tasks that are due in the next 48 hours, right? That you haven't had a reminder on already. Meaning if it was in yesterday's digest email, it's not gonna remind me again today. It's only gonna show up in one of those. Okay? but it'll send this to me and you'll see this has a link to be able to view the tasks page. It also has a link to each contact record that has a task associated. And if you look, it says exceeded a certain amount. You can tell that these are some automated tasks that I had assigned to myself, okay? So you have that digest that'll go out uh, on a daily basis, right? Usually in the morning to let you know, hey, you've got tasks that are due in the next couple of days. If I've created a task for myself, so the one I created for Bobby that's in the future, right? I'll, I'll get that reminder in that, that digest. If there's only one or two tasks, you'll just get an email that says you get a task that's due, right? But you'll get this sort of digest version if you've gotten more than that. Okay? If you've gotten a, a task assigned to you through an automated workflow, you won't get an immediate email about those because a, a workflow could create like 50 tasks for you in one go one day. We're not going to send you an email for every single one. Those will also follow this digest pattern you'll get a reminder you know, within a 48 hour window of when it is due to make sure that you do it, okay? You'll still see it on your tasks list. You'll still see the little counter on the dashboard right away. This is just a little bit different in terms of how the reminder goes out. Okay, uh, so that's, I told you, man, we're gonna talk a lot about tasks in depth for sure. Now, I wanna talk about doing some of these things. Right? Let's talk about uh, uh, completing some of these tasks that we have. Now, when I complete a task, like I mentioned, it, it essentially becomes a note, right? So in here, uh, let's take a look at uh, Tony. I know I've got that task that Stephanie assigned to me here. Now, again, you could manage this from that task board, right? It's all really about your speed you can manage it from the contact record. So here I could click to edit this if I wanted to add some context. I wanna say it's 
in progress, I wanna do any of those sorts of things. Um, if I wanted to dismiss it very quickly, I can click on the red X, just say, I'm not calling him, don't need to do that. Okay, dismiss as opposed to delete, right? I don't wanna delete it, that means it never existed. I wanna dismiss it and say, this is a task, I was assigned it and I chose not to do it. That tells a very different story. But if I go to complete this, click on the little blue check, then you'll see I'm immediately prompted to log a note. It says, hey, you should create a contact note. I have to uncheck that box if I don't want to create a contact note. The best practice is to create that note. And this is where we get into talking about notes, right? I said a task can become a note. So now I'm logging a note and I'm going to select a note type. Talk a little bit about note types. Okay. Note types are something, there, there's a lot of note types built into the system. A number of these here are just baked in. And you, or at least your admin, has the ability to create as many custom note types as you would like. Okay. And I would recommend doing that, especially for any type of interaction that you want to track, and certainly that you have some metrics around or you want to be able to report on. Right? I want to know when certain things have happened. Okay, um, because I don't just want to say, oh, okay, well, we don't send text messages. So text message is what means that um, we actually sat down and, and had a major donor visit. No, 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 no. I want to create a custom note type for major donor visit. All these down here at the bottom, right? These are all custom note types. Okay, brief eye contact, surprisingly not baked into the system. That's one that I created. But create a note type for yourself. It's going to be much easier to go ahead and report on, okay, how many major donor visits have our MGOs made in the last 90 days? As opposed to remembering, oh yeah, text message means major donor visit, but um, uh, Sally doesn't always remember that, so she sometimes reports them as in-person. So grab everything that's a text message and everything that's in-person if it was Sally's, and you can't do that. And that, that, that kind of bonkers. So I might say, yeah, I called and uh, uh, called and spoke to Pepper and she said that everything is going swell. I can't type, there we go. Everything's going swell. I can log how much time I spent. We spent like 20 minutes on the phone. It was a neat little chat and I can complete that task. Now I've actually done two things. I completed the task. You can see it's checked off here, it's done. Okay. If I go to the notes tab on this record, this is where I can view all the contact notes for this contact. You'll see that it tells me, hey, this is a task that you completed. It was assigned to you by Stephanie. When you did it, here's what happened. So it tells me kind of the full story here. And if I go to the overview, right, that activity feed, that's just going to show me that I added a note. It doesn't show me the task part, but it does show me I called and who I spoke with and how it, how it went. Okay. Now, one different type of task when you go to complete it, what I wanted to show you real quickly, is one that was created through automation. This can only be done through automation, but within a workflow, we have this in our, our uh, automated workflow that I created here, one called task demo. Okay. And that gives me a link to go ahead and view the workflow. This particular task here is actually got a personalized email template associated with it. Okay, so if I pause this workflow, yeah, yeah, yeah. I accept the consequences of my actions, thank you. I can come in and edit this, right? And you'll see this has a personalized email template associated with it. It's called the welcome email template, okay? So when I come in here as a user and say, I wanna complete this task, up at the top, it says, okay, great. Then it's time to send the welcome email. Who are you sending it to? I'm gonna send it to Moira Rose, great. Now I wanna go ahead and compose that email. That'll pop that open in my email platform, right? And it'll bring me that email. Here's what it looks like. Welcome to Scott's training org, Moira. So glad you wanna join. I could come in here and um, say, uh, I saw the new movie. It was fantastic. Great. And then I could go ahead and send that email. Okay, with my little note added and anything else I wanna customize. And in this case, I've got the email sync feature activated. So you'll notice it's automatically going to BCC the email sync address, okay? So it tells me on screen, hey, you don't need to actually log a note if you don't want to because you have email sync. 
So it's already gonna log a note just by virtue of I sent an email. So I have a choice now. If I wanted to add additional context here about the email, I could go ahead and put that in. Otherwise it's gonna do it for me right away. Okay, but that's a slightly different type of task, one that has that personalized email template linked into it. When you go to complete it, you'll see that. Okay, so we talked about notes. We talked about note types. I wanted to talk really quickly two more things about notes themselves now. So much time on tasks. Boy, howdy. Um, but with notes, okay, and, and we'll do this here. Let's close that before I accidentally send it to Moira Rose or whoever else. When I am on the overview tab of a contact record, I can actually add a note right from here. And you'll see that right here, it says add a note. This general box here, that's actually the note type. We talked about selecting a note type. I can click that and that'll give me a drop down here of all the different note types that I might wanna select, right? So I could say um, in person, and I could say uh, ran into Johnny at the store in town. I can just hit enter or I could click save and that'll log that note. Lickety splickety, very quick. Okay. If I go to the notes tab, I can do a little bit more. That's where I can still select the note type. I can still type my note, but I can override the date. This assumed this was happening right now. But if I want to document something I did last week, I would do it from here so I can set the date correctly. I can attach it to a particular individual and specify it was Johnny that I ran into. I could make it important from here, put it in a big red bar at the top of the screen, or even mark this as a private note so that only admins can see it, I can see it because it's mine, and anyone who has private note permission can see it. Okay. And this is also where I can drag and drop or click to select a file to attach a file to a note. So if I've got a letter that someone sent in telling me how much the work our organization does means to them, I don't just wanna type a note that says, Johnny sent us a really nice letter. I wanna attach a PDF of that right here and then I can bring it up anytime I want, okay? I'll see a little cloud symbol on here that shows me, hey, you've got an attachment to that particular note and then I can go ahead and download it and view it. And here's the history of all the notes that have been logged for this particular contact. Now, one other thing that's a really big deal, especially for folks who are out and meeting with donors, which for the last year and change has all been happening over Zoom anyway, but we're starting to get back to the point where it's kind of safe to get in the car and go take a major donor to lunch again. Um, folks might be using the virtuous mobile app, all right? And if you're doing that, I've got a little quick, I just made a quick video here to show. Um, here, I looked up Tony Stark, uh, and I wanted to log a note to document uh, an interaction that I had with him. All right, so we can take a look at this here. You can click add and then you can go ahead and add a note. I can select the note type. These are all the different note types that we just saw and I can pick one, this was in person. And then I can type out the note and I am a very poor typist and even more so when trying to use my thumbs, right? But I do the best that I can. I'm not a digital native, or at least a mobile native, I suppose. Um, and then I can save that note. And I did everything right on my phone. I didn't have to go back to the office. I didn't have to log into Virtuous that way. And I can go ahead and view that note. We had lunch, discuss, discuss the sponsorship for next year, right? And from here, I can even edit it. I can make it important. I can do any of those things right there on my phone. Okay, so all of this stuff that we're talking about here is stuff that I, I'm not really limited necessarily to having to do it on my computer. And I know that's always the big thing when, you know, hey, well, our, our, our gift officers don't log their contact reports because, you know, they have to get back to the office and it's tough. Well, great, do it on your phone. Here's that note that we just saw, All right? There it is right there. Have lunch, discuss sponsorship for next year. It's showing up right away. So a lot of different ways to be able to get those notes in to Virtuous. Okay. Now we've been focusing primarily on contact tasks and contact notes. That's really what you're gonna do the majority of. But like we mentioned earlier, you also have this ability to log notes on grants and to log notes on projects. The behavior is very similar there. And you've got the ability to create tasks on not only contacts, but on campaign communications and also to create contacts uh, or tasks, excuse me, on um, uh, grants. Boy, flew right out of my head. 
well, but managing them is very similar. Okay, uh, so I know we've only got about nine minutes left. I was trying to keep an eye on the q and I only saw a couple things coming in there. And Stephanie, I know I saw you chatting with a couple of folks in there. Were there any uh, other open questions that we have that I maybe missed? I think I got to everything before you, Scott. That's a first. So if anybody That's else has any fair. questions, please, by all means, we got time. I like to be challenged here. That's no good. <laughs> and I know that, um, you know, we spend a lot of time on tasks. And like I said, there, there's just a lot of functionality baked in there to tasks and, and a few different ways, again, to create those tasks. Um, you know, and, and some of those will uh, apply to different levels of user, right? So. Um, as an admin, anyone on the line who is an admin, you've got the ability to do all these things and to create them for everybody on your team and everything else. Um, someone who is just a, 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 I don't wanna say just a fundraiser, but <laughs> someone who doesn't have admin access necessarily, right? They wouldn't be going in and creating a workflow and, and doing all that, but they can still create a basic task. They can still create an automated task for themselves, but they'll also still go in and complete those tasks, right? So that, that same workflow kind of applies to everyone. Okay, on the contact notes, uh, same thing, right? Uh, you know, an admin, you're gonna do everything, you're gonna see everything. Someone who might be a restricted user might have a little bit of a different view. Okay, remember with permissions, you can even limit which notes a user is allowed to see. You might limit someone to seeing only their own contact notes. So they'll have some different views there in terms of what they're, they're able to interact with or what they're able to see. Same with tasks. I could limit a user to seeing only their own tasks. That'll apply to what they see on a contact record. That'll change their view when they're on the tasks page. Okay. So everything we saw today really is at that sort of admin level. You might uh, see some differences depending on your user permissions once you're in Virtuous. Okay, well, this is great. I always feel like we're trying to rush to get to as many questions as we can. Um, so that's fantastic. Uh, I'm hoping that this uh, has been helpful for everybody. I, I kind of like the fact that, um, you know, with an hour, we really can dive all, very deep on some of these features. In the past, we may have had to move kind of quickly, I know. Um, but uh, I do want to also remember, remind everybody, excuse me, to tune in next week, right? Again, we're doing this weekly now, guys. And we'd love to have you come in and, and jump on ask questions, chat. We want this to be as uh, interactive and as helpful for you guys as it can be. Next week, we're gonna be looking at some key fundraising strategies, right? Strategies are great. You go hear someone speak or you, you hang out on some of the responsive weekly discussions I know we have. Um, you can hear some great strategy ideas, but hey, well, that sounds awesome, but how do I actually do those things? Or, or how does that apply if I'm in virtue? So we're gonna look at some of that, right? And we wanna try to do that monthly as well, at least once a month to try to bubble up a few of these things for you, okay? Um, and as always, I like to leave everybody. Uh, oh, did I just see something come in? Was that for me? I was actually just gonna uh, type on back that we'll actually post this video uh, or the video for this session tomorrow and the, the section around email templates and uh, uh, or the personalized email templates, excuse me, right around like the 45, 50 minute mark. So um, excellent. I think that'll do it. Well, yeah. And, and again, those personalized email templates you can associate with tasks, but only through an automated workflow. That's the, one of the key headlines there. Um, well, I do like to have some words from someone who's uh, smarter than me. Um, and uh, it seems like I've been pulling up a lot from novelists lately. You can tell that I'm a, a book person. Um, but anytime you can go to Victor Hugo, right? You have to. Um, but I really thought this was kind of applicable, right? He who every morning plans the transactions of that day and follows that plan carries a thread that will guide him through the labyrinth of the most busy life. And the thing that really jumped out at me about this is I feel like in the nonprofit space, everybody is so busy. Everybody is running a thousand miles an hour in every direction. Everybody feels the pinch of being slightly understaffed or slightly underfunded, more than slightly, especially coming out of this past year, right? And so if you can really maximize the tools that you have to plan out who you need to talk to and when and to know when that's going to happen, right? To have that plan and be able to stick with it, 
as busy as it gets, you know that you're staying on top of things. And by using things like automated tasks and, and even you know, workflow automation to create tasks and to ping you when you need to do things, again, you can reduce the time that you might be spending going over you know, some of the widgets on your dashboard or pulling a, a query that you look at every day or every week or, or looking at reports and just let Virtuous let you know, hey, this happened. There, there's something that you need to call and say thank you about. There's something that you need to pay attention to. There's something that you need to do, right? That's one less thing that you have to keep track of so you're not overtaxing your working memory. All right, thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Stephanie, as always, for being an amazing co-host. It is my absolute pleasure, Scott. That is awesome. And hopefully we will see you guys all next week. Bye, everybody. <laughs>